Good morning to you all. Slight te technical hitch this morning for our delayed start. Apologies for that. Welcome to our all-age service on this second Sunday of Advent, when we will be lighting our second Advent candle in a bit. But first of all, we're going to sing our first song, which is Be There My Vision. And if anybody has um, bought any toys that will go to Christian Family Concern, you can bring it up. But first, a prayer. Lord Jesus, Head of the Church, today we come to give you honour and praise. Help us to make you the focus of our thoughts and worship during our service today. Amen. Do stand to sing, Be There My Vision. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Be all else but not to me, save thou thou art. Be thou my birth, O in the day and the night. Both waking and sleeping, thy prayer. Advent candle, the candle of love, which Carla's going to come and light for us. We seem to have a bit of a problem with the lighter again. She's done it. So when Carla's lit the two candles, because we light last week's one as well as this week's, we're going to say a responsive prayer, which will come on the screen, and you will join in with the dark ones, light of the world, it is mainly. Thank you, Carla. So please join in with the dark yellow, the bold yellow. As we light our Advent candle, 
light of the world, shine on us. As we prepare for Christmas time, light of the world, shine on us. In this world of pain and darkness, light of the world, shine through us. To, t to all the people who don't know you, light of the world, shine through us. Jesus, you are coming again. Light of the world, light the way in our service here today. Light of the world, light the way. So today, for our introduction, and it's just a little icebreaker. So if you go to a concert or a show, there is often a warm-up act. Somebody that does something before the actual main person. How do you think they feel? Do they feel kind of, oh, it's just me. Do people want to see me? Or what do they think they're doing it for? I wonder if somebody might want to come up and tell us about briefly about a warm-up act that they may have seen. Anybody, adult or child? And, and you know, if you go to a concert or a show and somebody speaks before, um, or plays an instrument or a band beforehand or sings, if anyone wants to come and say anything about the warm up act, please do. <laughs> Isabella, I knew you wouldn't let me down. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I guess it's typical of warm-up warm up acts sometimes. I can't even remember the band's name. But it was a concert for Rod Stewart. And there was this amazing band. Um, they were Irish music. They had fiddles and they played very, very well. But I guess because the main act was Rod Stewart, I can't remember their names. But they were good. <laughs> Thank you. Isabella said her act was good, but sometimes they're not so good. How do you think the audience responds to a warm-up act? When it's time to introduce the main act, how do you think the warm-up feels then? They might feel let down, they might be happy, who knows? Well, today we're going to hear about John the Baptist. He was a prophet and a messenger, and he helped people see that we must prepare our hearts for Jesus. John the Baptist put a lot of effort into not being the centre of attention. He wanted people to focus on Jesus. So now we're going to come to our time of confession. So if we'd like to stand for that, please. This is an Advent confession for all ages. Together, Lord Jesus, we want to be ready for when you return. Please forgive us for the wrong things we have done and for the good things we have not done. We turn away from doing those wrong things together and ask for your help to put things right. Thank you that you died so that we can be forgiven. Help us to turn to you and follow you. Amen. And the forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, that when we confess our sins to you, you forgive us and give us a fresh start. Help us, Lord, to walk closely with you until the day that we meet you face to face. Amen. Do be seated. Now we're going to bring forward the Matthew reading now, which Jennifer's going to read. Now you need to listen very carefully because there's a quiz afterwards. The reading is from Matthew 3, verses 1 to 12 the proclamation of John the Baptist. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? 
bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Thank you, Jennifer. Now, I hope you're all listening. Seems a bit unfair. We have less people on this side, but I'm sure your brains will be able to... Oh, Amanda's going over. That gives you an even better chance. So it's this side and this side. So, Jennifer, if you keep the score for your side, please, and Amanda, you keep the score for your side. So I think we'll start with the smaller side. So... That's this side. Where was John the Baptist when he was preaching? Just call out the answer. Not quite. (laughs) Exactly, Helen. Thank you. In the wilderness of Judea. This side. Which Old Testament prophet called John the Baptist a voice crying out in the wilderness. Isaiah, yes. And Jennifer, no cheating, if that's all right. I think you need to put, <laughs> you need to put the um, reading in front of you. <laughs> yes, that's one all now. What food did John the Baptist eat? That this side. Locusts and wild honey. L- lovely or not. <laughs> what did John the Baptist wear? This side. Someone put, put, um, Carl. He wore clothes, yes. What, what were they made from? Camel's hair. And what else did he wear? A leather belt. It, yes. Well done. Now your answer comes in, Manus, I think. Which river did John the Baptist b- baptize the people? The River Jordan. Right, Jennifer's side. For what purpose did John the Baptist baptise people? It's this side, sorry. Sorry? Yeah, but there's, there's something else. I thought, why do you think he baptised them? Yes, exactly, to wash away their sins, for confessing their sins. Amanda said, what did he tell the people to prepare? Sorry, I can't, can't hear you, Rose. Sorry, I, you'll have to shout. <laughs> I can come with the microphone. What did he say to prepare? Say it. Prepare your heart. Prepare your hearts, yes, but there's, there's another answer that was in the reading. Come on, Amanda, you must know this. Ron. For Christmas. Yeah, prepare for Christmas, yeah, but not in the reading. Anyone from this side? You've, you've had two chances. Anyone from this side? Yes, yes, yes. The other way. Yes. For who? Jesus. Yes, prepare the way of the Lord. That's an extra point to this side. Remember that, Jennifer. I don't think you got it. you got it on that side. You could be bringing another answer. Okay. Oh, OK. 
Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe he was Isaiah. <laughs> okay, we'll let you, have, let you have that. Which group of people did John the Baptist call a brood of vipers? This side, isn't it? Yes, cut. Yes, the Pharisees and Sadducees. This side, speaking about Jesus, what did John the Baptist say he was unworthy to do? Carry his sandals. This side, John the Baptist baptised people with water. What did he say Jesus would baptise with? Carl, the Holy Spirit, yes, and what else? One more thing. Fire, yes, that's correct. So I think it's a draw. So the first... <laughs> you did win, yes, but they, this was because I said... Sorry, Amanda? Because I said he and not Isaiah, yeah. <laughs> I think I changed my questions around in the order, so that's probably why it came out like that. <laughs> I didn't copy and paste it right. Okay, the first person to shout out really loudly on any team the answer what does the second advent candle represent love love right you can share these jelly snakes now i couldn't bring any locusts and i didn't bring honey but this team can share the jelly snakes after the service <laughs> after the service <laughs> I thought jelly snakes was pretty good because I don't think I'd want to eat locusts and I'm sure you wouldn't either. I'm not even keen on honey myself. Okay, so that's warmed you. Hopefully it's warmed you up a bit with your voices, even if it's not with your body. But now the next song before we have the second reading and, and Regina comes to speak is called We Are Marching. So you can actually warm yourself up by doing the actions. Thank you, Quaker. church i hope you've all warmed up a little bit now so jennifer will give us our romans reading and then whilst regina speaks we have some activities that the children can come and do readings from romans 15 verses 14 to 13 for whatever was written in former days was written for our instructions, so that by steadfastness and by encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, 
in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. Therefore, I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Hi, good morning everyone. Hope you are nicely warmed up after that march. Let's just uh, steal our hearts and our minds as uh, we prepare to hear God's word. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you that you have brought us here this morning. We know, Lord, that you have a word for each one of us. Prepare us, therefore, to be open to what you want to say to us. And may your word accomplish its purposes in our lives. Amen. Now, for about 400 years, there had been no word from God through the prophets. God had been silent. Then John appeared, wearing unusual clothes and eating a diet of locusts and honey. Now, the last person to wear dress like that was Elijah. Now, the Jews expected Elijah to return before the coming of the Messiah, so John was seen as the forerunner of the Christ. And they wondered what this person was like. And in those days, it was no more practice for the king, before he arrived in a certain place, for someone to go in that particular area and clear the way for the king's arrival. So it was then that John was seen as the one who came to prepare the way for the first coming of Jesus. And John was a very challenging and inspiring preacher. He called people to confess their sin, as we heard from Val earlier in the children's focus. He called people to repent, to turn away from their sins, and he baptized them as a way of uh, confession and preparation for Christ to come. So he baptized them with water, but he said the one who was coming would baptize them with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He was meaning Jesus. So John was pointing people not to himself, but he was pointing people to God, to, to Christ, who was the greater one who was coming. And John would say later in John 3, he, meaning Jesus, must increase and I must decrease. John was showing, therefore, great humility. John was showing, therefore, great understanding of his own role in the purposes of God, which was that of preparing the way for Jesus. Now we can learn something from that as well, that each one of us here, we have a unique role. Each one of us here are unique and God has placed us so that we can fulfill our own unique role in his kingdom 
as we prepare for the second coming of Christ. And we need to search ourselves to say, what is it that you want me to do? What role is it do you want me to take? Make it clear for me, God, so that I can fulfill the purpose that you have for me as I wait for the second coming of Christ. John did his, purpose, uh, his, fun his function, and we have our function. Each have got our function uh, to fulfill. Now, many heard John's call, and they repented and were baptized. But others, such as the religious leaders, as we heard in the reading earlier, they found John's message challenging and difficult to accept. They believed that uh, because they were descended from Abraham, that was what made them close to God. Not so, said John. He told them clearly that God was able to make out of stones, sons and daughters for himself. John was making clear that it was not through our descendancy or through our history or through anything else that we are saved. It was only through the blood of Jesus. And that's what Paul said in Ephesians. It's not by our works, it's by the grace of God that we are saved, lest anyone should boast. And so, it's not what we do for God, but it's what God has done for us through Jesus on the cross. So this was the message John was preaching in preparing for Jesus' first coming. John was pointing people to the coming of Jesus, who would eventually die, and that way he would bring salvation to everyone and the hope of eternal life, regardless of our descendancy, uh, our history, or our ancestry. All people who accept Jesus will be welcomed into the kingdom of God to be one big family as the children of God. And so, yes, Jesus was coming. He was coming in order that humanity, people, might be reconciled back to God and to one another. It was through the reconciling work of Christ on the cross whereby all who believe in Jesus would be united as one big family, as children of God, and a one big family. Jesus is the hope of that unity. He is the hope of the unity between the Jews and the Gentiles, between people from every nation and every language. The blood of Jesus covers all people who choose to accept him. And we are all equally forgiven and welcomed as children of God. That is what Paul is referring to in uh, the reading we heard from Romans. It said, the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. In him, the Gentiles will have hope. Yes, there is hope in the midst of the divided world that we see. The Christian can have hope. And this is not just some wishful thinking. It's a solid hope that is founded on Jesus, the rock. The Christian can dare to have hope of peace where there is conflict, where there is hatred or disharmony. The child of God can work and pray for peace and unity. The child of God can pray for hope. Why? Because of the coming of Jesus. He is the Prince of Peace. We can continue to pray for that peace. And now and again, we see glimpses of that peace. But real peace, lasting peace, will come when Jesus shall return to bring in a new heaven and a new earth where he shall rule in ways of justice and peace. Now we get a picture of this sort of world order, the new world order that Jesus will bring in. We hear in Revelations. It says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Look, God's dwelling place is among the people 
and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, Look, I am making all things new. Then he said, Write these things down, for these words are trustworthy and true. I like that. These words are trustworthy and true. We need to know that the word of God is trustworthy and true, and that Jesus will return just as, as God's word says. Now, because we have this hope of a future with God in eternity, we can have peace in our hearts, even in the midst of life's storms. The presence of Jesus in our lives and the hope of a future with him gives us peace and joy in the here and now. Now, as we have received this hope, how might we bring the same hope to those around us this Advent, here in our local community and in the world at large? Yes, we can do so through prayer for the poor, for those who are marginalized, for those who are ravaged by war and disease. Yes, we can pray. But more than that, just as we are doing today, we've just done today on Toy Sunday, we can be generous to those in need. We can give, not because we are plenty. We can give because we want to bring a little bit of God's kingdom to our brothers and sisters who are suffering poverty, disease, hunger. It's amazing how small little acts of love and generosity can bring hope to a child, and certainly, to the whole family. With hope comes joy and peace, because lack of hope still summons joy and peace. So our giving serves to bring a little bit of God's hope to a community. When one has hope, they are able to endure suffering, because they know that it will not last forever. There is a hope for a better future. As someone has said, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. And yes, we can pray and ask God to make us instruments of peace and unity in our places, in our community, in our homes, in our workplaces. There's so much on the news about division. You and I carry news of the Prince of Peace, the good news that he brings, the peace that Jesus only brings. We can pray that he uses us as instruments to bring peace and reconciliation, to bring unity. Peace and love and reconciliation are the fruits of a people who belong to the kingdom of God, and you and I belong to that kingdom. We cannot produce that fruit in our own strength, but in the power of the Holy Spirit, who is given to us as we accept Jesus into our lives. Yes, that's why we heard in the reading earlier that when Jesus comes, he will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Yes, and Jesus said the same. Before he left earth, he told his disciples that they would receive power from on high, referring to the Holy Spirit, that each believer in Christ, he will be sealed with the Holy Spirit, who empowers us to live a life as children of God, bringing a little bit of his kingdom to those around us. Now, as we await Christ's second coming, we need to be spreading the good news of God's saving grace through Jesus, telling of the hope 
that is found only in him. Now Jesus came as a baby that first advent, but he shall return the second time as judge and king to usher in a new world order where peace, justice, and love reign. This is the sure hope that every follower of Jesus has. This world is moving on away, carried away in man-made ways of bringing peace and comfort. But as we see, those things do not satisfy and do not last. Even those who try and get a lot of money and wealth, they remain dissatisfied and cannot save themselves. But we have the good news of the lasting hope that is found only in Jesus, and we need to tell it. And that is the hope that Paul is talking about in the Romans reading. He is telling the church in Rome and us today not only to live by this hope, but to share that hope with those around us. This is the hope that he's speaking about when he says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now it's easy to be carried away by the busyness of this time and forget that the real preparation starts in our hearts. Just as John prepared the way for Christ's first coming, we need to be preparing our hearts so that Christ is at the center of all our celebrations. It's only as we take the time to reflect and listen to God that we can truly come into the full experience of what the celebrations are really all about, the coming of God to his people, to give himself for our redemption through Christ's eventual death on the cross. So there is, uh, in the here now, we can live in that sure hope of eternal life, in anticipation of Christ's second coming, to bring in a new heaven and a new earth where there will be no more pain, no more suffering, and no more death. It's this Advent hope, this very Advent hope, that we need to be so eager to tell, so eager to share with the world. The world out there is hurting, is confused, and we have the sure, certain hope we need to share with them. John fulfilled this function. John fulfilled this role and told people about the first coming of Jesus. It is our role now. It is our function. It is our purpose. It's each one of us. We've been placed here so that we can tell people, we can tell the world, we can tell the world of the hope that is found only in Jesus, of the hope that is found in the Christ child. And we need to be eager to tell that story that as John the Baptist did, he set us an example and we need to go out there and tell the world that in the midst of strife, in the midst of conflict, in the midst of challenges, there is hope in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Regina. Now, children, I think, I wonder whether you'd like to go and sit back down in your seats because it would be a good idea for the next part. So, as we prepare and get ready for Christmas during the weeks of Advent, you may have noticed the nativity scene that we have put together on the grass outside when you came in today. Most of that was made using recycled materials. So this Christmas time is an opportunity for you to invite your friends and neighbours to St Mary's to share the light of God's love and to spread his word. So look at it when you go home today as you leave. It's just in the main, out on the grass as you come in. So now we're going to watch the short Share the Light video where this idea has come from.
to our prayers let us pray father god we praise you for your call on john the baptist's life for his call to us to change our minds and our ways we praise you for your son jesus who calls us to serve him in your world today and for calling each of us by name and for the family of your church we praise you today and every day as we journey towards christmas we praise and thank you Loving God, we pray for all those people whose lives feel like a wilderness, for the lonely, the lost, the searching, the sick, the broken and bereaved. We pray that they will find their way to you. God of hope, though we live in such troubled times when so many parts of the world are at war or in conflict, the suffering of Ukraine continues as the weather gets rougher and no peaceful outcome seems close, we ask for your faith to watch over us. For those whose, where life is a daily struggle, choosing between heating and eating, those continually worrying about debt and rising prices, and feeling overwhelmed by worry, may they find rest in you. For those that are lonely and in distress, mistreated or in danger, some sick or far from home, we ask for your healing to all who are in need today. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity that we have had this week to bring toys to give to families of Christian family concern for young mothers there. And we also take this opportunity that we have for the coming week to witness to so many local school children through our Christmas journey. We pray for all the children that will attend and for the staff that they may come to know you more through the real meaning of Christmas. We pray for good health, protection and strength for our cast and we ask that you will be at the centre of all these performances. And as we go from here today, prepare our hearts for the coming week in what we do and who we meet. Amen. Let's conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Before we have our final song, Amanda, do you want to give any notices? So thank you. Sorry about the heating. It did not. Come, it is actually on now. If you go and stand by a radiator, but it didn't come on. It sort of switched itself off early morning. We think it may be a combination of wind and uh, a drop in the outside temperature leads to different pressures within the gas system, slightly beyond me. But um, so my apologies. There's going to be some nice hot coffee and tea over there in five minutes' time for you to stay behind and have a quick chat with one another and huddle around a radiator. But This week is the Christmas journey when we have approximately 453 primary school children coming here to hear about the story of Christmas. And our actors, our church members who are taking part in that, they don't have any speaking parts, but are going to be rehearsing at half past 12 in here at the end of of our service here. And we're going to be presenting this journey every morning from Monday to Thursday and every afternoon except for Monday, I think. And we're going to have groups of 60, which are actually very large groups for us to have. So do pray that uh, every single child gets the opportunity to really hear the story and to be able to ask their questions. You probably noticed outside a renovated shed from the church back garden. Did you notice that when you came in? And that was set up by um, Nigel and other people... Yes, I know, but they're not here. So I'm just about to say, and Nigel and others who aren't here, uh, Brian and Andrew, who got it already. But it was Pat, who you may not know, but Pat, who organized the wonderful figures uh, inside the shed, plus the sheep who are in there are made by our preschool. So big thanks to them. But do go and have a look and and enjoy it. We're going to try and make it more interactive over the coming week. And Christmas trees should be up outside very soon. And we're going to be having our Christmas trees around the, around the Christmas tree, our Christmas tree carols around the Christmas tree, uh, in two weeks' time on Saturday afternoon, just for an hour, if you'd like to come and join in and bring your neighbours. I think it is just after one of the, the matches, so you won't have to miss whatever match is being played. Or we know a match is being played, but whoever is playing one another. So that's next week with our Christmas journey. And then next Sunday afternoon is the Christingle, which is really good fun. If you've not been to one before, come along. It's at 4 p.m. next Sunday in here. It involves oranges, candles, and Chris Christingle herself will be here. So looking forward to that. It's, it's part of our message church. There'll be activities to do as well. Not hundreds of activities, but there'll be some activities for all our young people too. We have got some invitations we need to take to all the roads that are listed. Now, on that table is where they've all been laid out. We normally have them at the back, but we're a bit short of space this week, so we can't fit them in there. But if you could just go and have a look at that table, if there are roads that you could take and deliver the invitations to, that would be fabulous. And especially if you could do it before Sunday, because Sunday is obviously when our first event that's on that invitation takes place. But don't let that put you off. You know, like just uh, take, a, take a lot, take a load, and then deliver them maybe after work or sometime this afternoon if you can. And then just for those of you who know, um, Tony Suffolk, who's a lovely friend in our church over many, many years, has been very ill and is now in her last few days of life. So we've been praying for her especially. So keep her, keep Tony in your prayers. Just a couple of extra notices for the Chris Dingle. If you have one of those Chris Dingle cubes, you can either bring it back to the Chris Dingle service or you can bring it back to any of the morning services during December. And also, we're going to serve refreshments after the Chris Dingle service, so we are asking for people to make cupcakes. So if anybody can make any cupcakes 
6, 12. Please see me afterwards. Thank you. And we're going to sing our final song line uh, with Andy Isabella standing at the back with the offering basket, which you may put your offering in. We're going to sing Lion and the Lamb. welcome him and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always amen do join for tea and coffee